Remember, trading should be non-subjective. As I just showed you, these patterns are too subjective. Someone could see a head and shoulders in one direction. Someone could not see it at all. It's, there's too much room for discretion involved. So we don't want to rely on things like that. As you saw, they're not consistent. Support and resistance may work for a while until it doesn't work. We don't want to be, you know, relying on using our hard-earned money on something that may work sometimes and may not work other times. And then also, it should be as simple as possible. Some, some of these patterns are not simple to recognize. You know, they're difficult seeing where a head and shoulders is or where an ascending wedge might be. It's not simple. So we, we, we want to use things that are as simple as possible, that are consistent and non-subjective. So where does that leave us? Well, with my favorite pattern. Okay, this is my favorite chart pattern. It's it, not subjective at all. It's cut and dry. Two people looking at it would see the same thing. It's consistent. I'll show you how consistent it is with some examples. And at the same time, it's extremely, I mean, extremely is, is, is not even the correct way to describe it. It's just profoundly simple. All right, so here it is. That's it, okay? A bar that closes at or near its high. So let's define this a little bit better. We want to see a bar close in the top 25% of its range, okay? This does not matter if it's a five-minute bar, if it's a tick bar, or if it's a monthly bar. It does not matter at all. If we see a bar that closes in the top 25% of its range, either at the top or anywhere in that top 25, that top quarter of its range, we're going to be looking to buy. This is a positive sign. Okay? It doesn't get any simpler than that. And conversely, this bar. Let's define it a little bit more. We're looking for a bar that either closes at the bottom or in its bottom 25% of its range, regardless if it's a one-minute bar, an hourly or four-hourly bar, or a yearly bar. It does not matter because if we see a bar like that, we're looking to sell. That's it. Okay, doesn't get any uh, more descriptive than that. We, there's no there's no room for subjectivity. We don't have to sit there and go, well, maybe, maybe not. No, that's what we're going to be doing. Now, why is this chart pattern so important? You may want to write this down. This is the definition of why we want to use or look for this chart pattern. Because when a price bar closes either at or near the top or bottom of its range, it means the market is giving you a clue as to which direction it wants to go. You notice I said the market. We're not talking about some guru, some forex guru who uh, you know you're you're piggybacking off his trades, or some uh, guy you're listening to on TV, or some uh, news report. We're simply listening to the simplest and cheapest way to trade, which is the market in front of you. Whether that's a five-minute time frame or an hourly time frame. The market is giving you a clue as to which direction it wants to go. And whenever the market gives you a clue, that's the thing you should be listening to the most. Okay? So that's extremely important. That's why we want to be listening and looking at this clue. All right. So now that we've seen that, though, how do we implement it? How are we actually going to use this? I mean, how do we apply it with our strategies? Okay. Well, let's, let's just say we have, whoops, kind of jumped the gun there. We have a strategy in place. It doesn't matter whether the strategy is based off of the full moon or if it's based off news reports. It doesn't matter. Okay? Or even it could be one of mine. It doesn't matter. But here are the rules you want to use or how to implement this chart pattern. If your strategy, once again, regardless of what it is, regardless of what it's based off, if it gives you a buy signal, use this chart pattern either as an entry bar. In other words, this is the bar you should be choosing to enter off of. Or if you are in the trade, use it as a directional tool, meaning that it's telling you the short-term direction of the market, whether it's still going in your desired direction or it's changing. Okay? So in other words, if you get a, a buy signal, rather than just simply buy at the market or place a limit, wait for this bar to approach or for it to appear. And that's going to be your, your signal, your trigger to get in. And the same thing works if you get a sell signal. Okay? Doesn't matter what strategy you're using, if your strategy gives you a sell signal. Rather than just selling at the market or waiting uh, to place a limit, just simply look for and use this chart pattern as your entry to bar or use it as a directional tool telling you if it's still safe or okay to be in that short position. All right, so let's apply this with a real basic, simple strategy. Let's first start looking at some daily bars to, to show you how this really works and how consistent it is. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it works 100% of the time, but it's got a tremendous, tremendous edge for high probability for success. 
So let's say our strategy is built off of uh, a pullback type of method, meaning that we find the trend, and once we find the trend, we're looking for little pullbacks against that trend to get in. Okay, so if we're going long, we're looking for a little sell-off. And if we're going short, we're looking for a little blip in price or a little rally. That's the pullback. All right, so here's a current chart of the British pound up to uh, roughly the end of September. As you can see, we were in a, a clear-cut uptrend that entire time. <clears throat> Excuse me. How could we have taken advantage of this uh, chart pattern? Well, we're met, remember, we're in a type of strategy that calls for a little sell-off since we're long. So we're looking for a sell-off, which would be right here, the pullback. And then rather than just simply place a, a, a limit order or buy at the market, we want to wait till we find a chart that closes in the top 25% as it does right here. So this is our entry bar. As you can see, once that bar appeared, the British pound went up 100, uh, 250 pips. All right? So it continues to go up until it gets to this point right here, and then we start to sell off again. So then we're looking for another pullback because the trend is still up. So we're not, rather than saying, well, I'll just place a limit somewhere based off of a, a Fibonacci replace, retracement or a based off of support. No, let's wait for the favorite chart pattern, which is right here, okay? We close in the top 25%, and after we saw that bar, guess what? British pound went up 400 pips, okay? See how simple that is? Simply by waiting for that chart pattern. 